for my next project will be the probably the biggest and most complex woodworking project so far. Want to take a guess what it is? Here's a hint. Yeah, I'm building a pool table. I already got uh, two sheets of ACX pine plywood already cut down a little bit and a sheet of melamine board which is going to be the slate. Uh, I didn't want to use real slate just because it's heavy and costs a lot and this is, I don't know how good this is going to turn out in the first place so I don't want to have a ton invested in it. And the melamine seems to be really smooth and I tried whipping a pool ball at it and it didn't leave a dent so I think it'll be pretty durable. I'll put some support ribs on the back. Um, that'll help keep it straight and flat, hopefully. And it'll be in the basement, so it's not going to warp. It's not going to be much humidity changes. I've had this uh, outfeed table on my table saw for a few years, made out of the same stuff, and it's it hasn't sagged or warped or anything. And that's out in the garage, so I think it'll be pretty good. And if it warps and turns to crap in a few years, I'll maybe build a better one out of real slate someday. i got my pocket templates cut out there, too. It's all designed and drawn up on AutoCAD by myself, so some might be some or slightly unorthodox methods for putting things together, but should hopefully work out. Now that I got my pockets marked out for my templates, time to cut them out. All right, pockets are all cut out. Starting to resemble pool table surface now. Just to clean up these edges a little bit, I went over them with a quarter inch round over bit. Just to, so it's not so sharp and jagged there and the balls will roll in easier. Did that to all six pockets. I cut up a two by four to make some strips. And these will actually get mounted underneath here, because that's where the cloth will come around and get uh, stapled to. So i got to attach them and glue them on the underside there. So i got to flip this over and get that done. In order to glue these things down, I tried regular glue, tight bond, and it, the boards basically just fell off this melamine board. But they make this specialized melamine tight bond, which I didn't even know about, and it's kind of hard to find. I had to order it on Amazon. but. That sticks really good. I even did a test piece here. I glued a piece to it and broke it off and it actually broke the uh, melamine surface. So it tore apart the material before the glue bond broke, which is really good. And I, this piece I couldn't even bust off with a hammer. So it actually sticks really well. So buy the right kind of glue, I guess. Well, I'm half done. I don't have enough clamps to do all six boards at once. So I guess that means it's time to take a break. Got all the backer boards glued on, the sides and corners. It's upside down right now, so I'll have to cut that out to match the hole. And I also got my support ribs cut. So three main support ribs going across the bottom. It'll get pocket hole screwed all along the length plus glued. That'll give the uh, table bed a bunch of rigidity. So now I need to cut the extra wood out from the holes and I'll do that with a jigsaw and then to get it rough and then uh, I got a pattern bit with the top bearing for my router to get it perfect. Now the backer board is nice and even with the hole. Get a little bit more done tonight. Got the three long main braces, these ones. Those are all screwed and glued. The rest of these are just, they had to cut them all to fit. So there's loose in there now, but I'll be pocket hole screwing and gluing those as well to give it all, make the whole thing nice and stiff. These are the legs. Just built a, basically a box out of plywood. And the main beam will kind of come down here and set on this surface. You get bolted to this. I doubled up the thickness here just so I had more to bolt into with some leg bolts. 
because it'll be able to be disassembled for moving and setting it up. So yeah, it'll be basically a plywood beam that runs across here and then one that goes across there also. Got the uh, basic frame pretty much mocked up now. The plywood side pieces uh, that kind of fit into the notches on the, the feet and the legs. And I'm going to use some lag bolts through from this side into, into here. So it can be disassembled and reassembled easily and moved easy. Just got done bolting it all up with lag bolts. Got 32 in all, 8 in each corner. Next step will be uh, installing some cross beams across this. I think I'll do three of them. Added some supports in the middle. They're just uh, pocket screwed in. Just to kind of hold them in place, but I got these uh, blocks here. Screwed and glued to take up the vertical load. So I went out and got a select piece of pine, uh, one by three, and split it on the table saw like that, and sent it through the uh, planer here to get it down to a quarter inch thick. And so that's what I'm using to trim out the corners on the legs here. Uh, it'll be kind of like a rail and style sort of deal like that. When it's all done, got that corner getting clamped up and glued. It's a tedious process of 16 corners in total to do that, but it'll take a while, but it should look pretty good. I am only about halfway done with the vertical pieces of the trim work, and I'm already of cutting these things. Uh, first I gotta split the wood, like rip it vertically. Send it through the planer to get it a quarter inch thick, and then put this uh, chamfer on the end there, so I can 45 them together in the corner. Uh, and yeah, I got a long way to go, but I just gotta keep plugging my way through it. And it is hot as heck out here, in case anyone watching this is not from the area and thinks Minnesota is nothing but a frozen hillscape. Um, yeah, it's fairly hot today, so there we go. Finally got all of the trim work done. I don't know how many pieces there are. Over a hundred, I'm sure. Every little, like, four-inch piece and all these mitered cuts that took forever. I had to fill the gap at the edge with putty and sand it down. Just got done sanding it all. But it turned out actually pretty nice. It looks like a nice rail and style construction. Might have actually been quicker to make actual rail and style panels, but this is probably a little easier, maybe stronger too. Next step is going to be to uh, load the top onto it and then start building the rails. Look at the top on and positioned. I'm keeping it secured with uh, six of these hurricane clips that are made for holding down roofs, but they seem to work good for this application. Just has to keep the top from moving around. It's mostly just held on by gravity. Or if somebody bumps into the table so it doesn't shift it. For the sub rails, I'm laminating a piece of quarter inch and a piece of uh, three quarter inch together in order to get the, uh, that's, uh, this and this to get the thickness I need. Doing some initial pocket and subrail fit up here, figuring out how far the subrail has to stick past the hole in the bed there in order for the pocket to line up right. Get that all figured out. I got this one positioned and cut to the right length, and it's going to get held on with bolts coming up from the bottom side, and I countersunk these holes. So there'll be these little T nuts in there, and so this. This is just the bottom half of the subrail. That's uh, it's this part here. These two pieces, quarter inch and three quarter inch piece of plywood. Then the T nut, top of the T nut will be right on that line there, and the bolt will come all the way through to the bottom here. And then the top of the rail will hide the T nut. So the T nuts will be permanently sealed in there, but they shouldn't move once 
once they're seated. That seemed to work pretty well. I just used a uh, two and a half inch bolt with a fender washer and a regular washer on it. Just to spread out the load because the hole is just slightly oversized. It's 5 16 hole. I might actually drill them out a little bigger so that this rail can be moved around slightly just to adjust things while it's getting set up, but it worked pretty good. So I got it countersunk. So the T-nuts are below flush, so when I put the uh, top trim board on for the top of the rail, it'll fit on just nicely. Alright, I've got the sub rails all bolted in with the T-nuts. Uh, next step would be taking some of my, I got some select 1x4 to use on the tops of all these. And that'll be the, uh, the visible rail with the, the inlays of the diamonds. So that's the next step, is cutting and gluing those on. Gluing up the top rails now. There's a sub rail. They're all installed. And I got the uh, 1x4 select board. This one's done on the top there. See how it overhangs a bit. Eventually it'll do the rail blind that goes right up in there. There's my little sub rail test piece. Um, it's backwards, it's this little piece there. Um, for some reason this angle ended up needing to be 20 degrees instead of 15. You know, opposite of 75. Uh, I think it's maybe just because the, uh, profile of the rubber is maybe just slightly different from what I found online when I sketched it in. Um, so I ended up needing to tilt it back a little more to get the, the edge a little higher, because this dimension here, this one, four, three, that's the two-thirds of the height of the ball is where it's supposed to hit the ball so higher or lower can make it not bounce quite right so I just had to tweak it a little that'll be on there like this and that's gonna get glued to the edge of my sub rails here so it'll end up stack up a little like that All right, here's the first test bounce Seems to work pretty good. I have all these pieces of stock cut, and that is uh, I'm actually going to have this profile on it for the uh, piece of rubber. All right, it's glued there, so this is going to have to get these angles cut in the back, but I think what's going to be easier is to glue this piece of stock to the rail first and then take the rail off and run it through and cut these angles. Otherwise, if I cut the angles first on this piece, then somehow i got to clamp this and glue it, and I think clamping on these angles might be a bit of an issue. So I think what's going to be the easiest is to clamp this first and then cut the angles of the table saw. First test fitting of the pockets. Seems to fit pretty good. And the drill 5 8 hole in through the end. You can't see it, but there's a hole in the bottom going up through there. From underneath, that's how you secure the pockets. Right now it's just kind of loose in there because I don't have it actually screwed in but just getting it in there and getting it test fitted looks pretty good eventually I'll have to make some cuts like that so that the pockets are more open this is too narrow right there but making some progress next thing to do after I had the Pocket test fitted. I went and drilled the holes in all six rails, and I also cut the profile. And that's uh, where the rubber will go on there. I also cut this 45 degree angle along the bottom, so when the cloth wraps around, there's it should stay kind of tight to it. And I also notched out the sides here. Um, that's just because uh, it's just so it fits the pocket a little better so that so I don't have a sharp edge sticking out here just to make it look a little nicer and finally the angles here 
in order to get the uh, correct opening. I had to figure out the angle there. I had to draw it all up on CAD and everything to figure that out. Make sure you get a decently playable table. And that's all we got today. Today, I chamfered the edges here. Get this. And I got this groove cut in here for the feather strip, quarter inch deep, quarter inch wide, and got the blinds cut, and use the dado blade to cut a groove underneath the rail blind, so that'll fit in there nice. I just gotta glue that in, and the rails will be pretty much done except for uh, carving out the inlays for the diamonds. Finally at the point where I'm attaching the rubber to the rails. Got this set of uh, K66 bumpers from Amazon. This one's already glued. That one I got the contact cement on just and on this piece I'm just uh, using this weldwood stuff. I know there's some specific 3M contact cement that's supposed to work better but I tested this on this piece here and took quite a bit of force to peel it off so I think it'll work pretty good. Um, so I just gotta wait for this to set up and I can put the second one on. Alright, I'm getting the uh, little pocket facings glued on, these guys. Um, got this one all trimmed up already, sanded flush with everything. Uh, and here's a little pro tip. Uh, save your off cuts for the, uh, the rubbers, you know, because they usually come out way too long. So you end up with some pieces. Uh, they make pretty good uh, standoffs for woodworking projects, you know. It stays nice and up off the surface. It's soft, won't mark the surface, and keeps it nice and steady in one spot. Okay, so for the inlays, I've marked them off. It should be nine and three quarter between them, since it's a 39 inch wide play bed, uh, seven foot table. I wanted to do sort of like a mother of pearl but real mother of pearl is expensive and hard to work with, but I have these uh, kind of pearlized guitar picks that are super easy to cut with a scissors. So I can just uh, cut those out in a diamond shape and make sure they're all the same. I 3D printed a little stencil here. This is good for tracing onto the wood and for marking the, the picks to cut them. And for the center, I'm actually gonna use the whole guitar pick just for a little personalized uh, customization there. Since I also build guitars and stuff. So that's kind of how it's going to look, and I gotta, I'm going to route out, you know, so that it sits flush. And for that, I also had to 3D print a height adjustable router attachment that I found on Thingiverse and printed that out for my Dremel. So I can carve those all out. That should be nice and tedious. I've got 18 of them to do. And then I'll epoxy them in there. I'll stain the wood first, and then I'll epoxy them in, and then varnish over them. So it'll be all nice and flush and smooth, so it should look pretty nice. I got the feather strips all sized and cut out of some poplar, and I got my inlays, holes routed out on every rail. I think we're all finally done. Time for some stain. Alright, got one coat of Jacobean Minwax finish stain on there. Looks pretty nice. Next is to uh, epoxy in the little inlays, and then after that I can varnish it. I was going to use these five minute epoxy to install the inlays, but turns out that super glue works as good as anything, and it's a lot quicker. So that's what I used. Got all 18 of them on now. Looks pretty cool with the guitar pick in the middle. White stands out against the dark color pretty nice. Last thing to do now is varnish it and then disassemble the whole entire thing and set it up where it's going to actually go and put the cloth on. Finished up the second coat of varnish tonight. It's looking pretty good. It's nice and smooth now. I'll probably only do two coats for the legs and the bottom rail support and stuff, but for the uh, top rails I'm thinking I'll maybe do one more coat at least, just because that gets touched a lot and 
will see the most wear and tear. And it's the most visible, so I want it to look the nicest. So I'll probably do a third coat of varnish on the top of the rails and maybe the sides of the rails too. We'll see. But almost done. Should have it set up here pretty soon. I got the space in the basement cleared out. Finally getting her set up. Got it about as level as it can be. So I got the rails to put on and can't really do that till I get the cloth on though. There's the cloth. Classic green. Pockets. Probably have to iron the cloth though, because there's wrinkles in it from being folded up for probably months. Just enough space around the whole entire thing to be able to use a uh, little 48 inch cue that I bought. Worst case scenario. Most shots I should be able to use the uh, standard cue, but I got a shorty cue for any shots that are 90 degrees to the edge. I'd be bumping into the wall with a long cue. With the felt unpackaged and laid out. It's got a lot of wrinkles. So I'm going to see if I can iron some of those out. I know a lot of them will go away from stretching, but if I can get rid of most of them beforehand, that would be good. Well, that was challenging. A little tougher than I thought it would be. I guess being my first time doing it, I didn't do too bad. Doesn't seem to be any wrinkles, except uh, by the corner, the center pockets here. Got a couple, but I think those will kind of be under the rails, so you really shouldn't see those, so it shouldn't affect play. Um, let's see how I, if I mind seeing these staples or not. If I do, I can always glue a little piece of fabric over it, a little scrap. But otherwise, it looks seems to look pretty good. There's one line in the middle here, kind of a lighter color. It's not a wrinkle, it's just kind of like a fold or something from shipping. Balls seem to roll good on it. Do the rails next, but that'll be a different day. This took quite a while. I got the rails all covered, and now it's just time to attach the pockets and put the rails on. Just about done. And there it is, all set up. Got the rails bolted down tight. The uh, pockets had some screws to go in from the underneath to hold the little leather pieces tight in there. Got the little spot on there. Now this kind of looks like blue almost on the uh, camera, but it's it's actually like the English green color. So it's very like primary green. It's just the uh, LED light that makes it look bluish. But yeah, turned out really nice. Fits in the space good. Got to tidy up a little bit. Eventually, I'll have this area finished off and have like a wall rack for the cues and stuff like that. Now this will do. I got these set of balls for free. Um, someone gave them to me, but they're all kind of beat up. They're, you can see they got scratches and they're, they're really dull. I tried polishing them, but they just didn't look good. They never really got shiny. So I splurged and got a set of Dynasphere bronze series. And yeah, these are really nice. Super shiny, phenolic resin, so it hopefully doesn't scratch up the cloth too bad right away at least. Uh, those should be good. I mean, yeah, by comparison, they're they're a little more cream color, or ivory colored, which is kind of cool. It's sort of retro. Yeah, definitely way shinier. Racked up and ready to play.
Wow, lucky shot.